I'm so happy to be here today with Ashley, and we're going to be talking about the art of power and feminine empowerment. And oh my goodness, I'm so grateful to be here with you, Ashley, and your flexibility. And you know, it's I'm in the middle of moving. So if you actually saw what's happening in real life behind me, you would be cracking up. And I was just wearing my mask, running to let my movers in. <laughs> so thank you so much. So let's get started. And um, today, Ashley, we're going to. So the theme of the day, uh, we've been talking about mindset and about um, self awareness and mm -hmm. how that's key to emotional IQ. That was kind of our, our first thing this morning. But I know you're also going to be sharing some really good stuff on this call. So why don't I let you get started? What were we going to be talking about, Ashley? Yeah, awesome. So thanks. Happy to be on here again with you today as things are ever evolving in this world. Uh, I too will be moving soon. So I can understand what you're going through. So actually today I wanted to talk about something called self love, or I titled it really uh, self love is a skill. And um, I think around awareness, it's such an integral like piece for the two together. We talk a lot and we work a lot around Self-aware, you know, people talk about self-awareness and they talk about self-love, 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 but like, what is it? How do I have it? And people are like, you know, all love, heart, peace, harmony. But the thing that I found is that love isn't something that you have or that you don't have, but rather it's actually a skill to learn. And it's something that we can all learn. And I will say that it's actually been a really integral part of my own journey. And it's something that I am just peeling more layers back, you know, people just be like, Oh, if you just love yourself more, you'll do something different. If you love yourself, you'll be healthier and you will make this choice and you'll make that choice and just, you know, do all these self love practices with the bed and, you know, the candles and the tub. And it's like, yeah, okay. For some people, it just doesn't resonate. And it's because they haven't actually learned the skill. Now, some women, which is so beautiful, and, and humans, right, learn the skill of self-love through their parents, through their upbringing. And so for some people, like love, opening themselves up to it, giving it to others, fully receiving it is effortless and it's easy. And, and some of us, not to make our parents wrong, but some of us may not have received love or learned about love in our love language, if you will, in a way that we understand it. So for example, for me, my way of being loved is actually human touch and also words of affirmation, like really building one up. And I see that now and I see why I needed it. My mom learned about love and expressing love through being teased. She had three older brothers and then a younger brother and a younger sister. So she was teased by her older brothers growing up. And my grandmother used to tell her, oh, you know, love, they, they're just doing it because they love you. They're just teasing you because they love you. So what did my mom learn? My mom learned that teasing and joking is a way that you express love. And so growing up, that's how she did it with us. We had nicknames, you know, and some of them were really fun. There were other teasing moments. But what I'm realizing now on the, this journey that I've been on has been that those moments actually did not teach me how to have self-love in the way that I want to. And again, my mom was doing the best that she can with what she had. And I, this is part of my journey. So I say that basically to say that self-love is something that we all learn in our own different ways. And it's up to us to really start to connect to it. Did we start to get, were we skilled in the criticism and the judgment and the teasing? Um, which are, in, in my opinion, kind of anti self love skills, to be really honest with you. Um, and so, or do we actually like really learn self love the way that we need to? So, um, you know, one of the one of the ways to sort of look at it outside of just this conversation is, is an Olympic athlete, An Olympic athlete can train and do really well, and work out hard and feed the body and do everything that they need to. But if the athlete is really good at drinking alcohol, one skill is seriously going to impact another. So if I'm skilled in self-criticism and self-judgment, it is not going to help me in my self-love journey. So I know I just talked a lot about that. I just wanted to pause for a moment to just take it in, see if there are any questions or comments or initial thoughts from you or for anybody who is on the live. 100%. I mean, when 
would you say um, the whole the teasing part, part, right? Like they, they love you. That's just the way. Like you hear it so often, right? And there's even an expression in French, qui aime bien, châtie bien, who likes you. They they like poke at you, and so that that to I totally relate with that. And so I. It's tough sometimes. I think when we talk about self-love, even with our own selves, mm. like what do you stop from the negative self-talk, your self-negative self-talk, right? Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. we say things that are worse to ourselves than we would say to a stranger. Oh, absolutely. I would say, honestly, that we actually talk worse to ourselves all the time more than we ever would to a stranger, truly. Um, so when it comes to sort of the self-criticism, the self-judgment, the stuff that we continue to say to ourselves, every time we do that, it's like we're adding more time to prison. It's like we're in this like not enough self-judgment prison. And every time that we say this negative stuff to us, we're just adding more time onto our sentence, right? I, I don't know if that like resonates for you, but like I started to think about it this way the other day when I was having, preparing for a talk that I'm doing tomorrow night. And it's about this not enough prison that we get stuck in and that we're trying to escape from. And that's really what the self-love comes from. And so if we start to become aware of the self-talk, we start to become aware of when we wake up in the morning and we look in the mirror to brush our teeth, what's the first thing we do? We probably start judging ourselves. Like I could be like, oh, I got some new wrinkles here. I'm so fat. I'm so this. My hair is blah. You know, whatever it is, we instantly go into that. So what are we doing? We're adding more time onto our sentence. Now, if we could wake up in the morning and start to shower ourselves in love, it might be uncomfortable, but it's slowly digging ourselves out day by day. We're starting to build ourselves out of, or get ourselves out of this prison and we're digging ourselves a tunnel. So what I mean by that is for, for a hack itself, it's shower yourself in love all parts of you for two minutes in the morning, first thing you do. It's like shower yourself as if it's like a newborn baby. And if you have to fake it for a little while, fake it. Because every time you do that, you're starting to dig the tunnel to freedom. You're starting to dig yourself out of this prison. And the more that you do it, and I would say do it in the morning and do it in the evening. And I mean all parts of you, the inside, the outside, even the parts of you that maybe you think were wrong or when you made a mistake, love who you were then because you were still doing the best that you could. And continue to dig yourself out because all of a sudden, when you string together a bunch of days where you're showering yourself in this self-love, all of a sudden, you find yourself on the other side of the prison, on the other side of the walls. And there's an open field of, of sunshine and of freedom and like a nakedness on your skin and it's this healing that starts to happen that didn't happen when we were younger. And it's an unconditional way of starting to acknowledge ourselves and love ourselves because ultimately we are the only ones who can truly love ourselves. And, and I will say the more that I've gone on this journey, the more I've been opened up, sorry for the dogs outside, um, the more I've been able to open up to receive love from other people and start to see where I've been rejecting it and pushing it away. And that goes, ties in so nicely to, oh, this virtual background is very funny, um, <laughs> ties in so nicely to our hack of the day where we're talking about how self-awareness is the foundation of emotional intelligence. So could you say Absolutely. a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Um, and this is, oh gosh, I love that that's our hack of the day. That is like the primary thing that I teach in my coaching and it's actually the number two item <laughs> on, on uh, some of my hacks, but again, I'm talking about tomorrow night, but it's self-awareness is the key to our freedom. It's the key to us seeing how we talk to ourselves, what we say, both when we wake up, throughout the day, when we're triggered. It's also an awareness about who we're spending time with and what happens with that. So if we are constantly around friends who hate themselves, who hate their bodies, who hate their partners, who hate their jobs, who complain about everything in the world, then that is going to permeate into us as well. So we have to have an awareness of everything. 
And I don't say that to like overwhelm people, but just start to notice and just start to open up. And it's just part of the journey. And as we start to notice things like, oh, I respond this way when someone says something to me. Like someone actually asked me once, what does it mean when somebody says I love you? And I really had to stop and, and sit back and see what that impact was to me. And it wasn't something that I could receive. So it's really about being curious. It's almost like going back to being the little kid that asked the questions, what is this? What is that? Why is this? Why is that? And starting to ask that about our own self-awareness in our own lives. So when something happens and we notice a trigger, we notice something, just start to get curious about it more so than anything. And just giving yourself a little bit of compassion as you begin this journey. And notice that it, it may take time. There may be things for you to heal, but it's so much better to be aware and to be aware of even the pain than to be trying to avoid pain or trying to be avoid, avoidant of ourselves because then we're just living a life that is not real. It's like an illusion and we're still inside of that prison. Even if we seem, seemingly seems like there's no walls around us, we are still inside a self-imposed prison. And do we ever get there? Is there like always a final, is there a final destination or is it just a never ending growth? Oh, that's such a great question. I think that we can dig out and that we can get to the sunlight and we can get to the freedom. So there's the ultimate freedom where we really begin to love ourselves and all, like I said, all parts of ourselves. And at the same time, there's also the expansion because when it comes to love, like ultimately love is everything and love can be everything and love can be the entire universe. Like love is the state I think that many of us want to get to, whether you're spiritual or, you know, you run in some sort of religious background or whatever it might be, like love is the ultimate vibration, the ultimate energy. So from my perspective, it is just, it's, it's an eternity. It's expansive. So yes, there is a place where we can finally break out of our self-criticism prison, then there is the walking into and owning our self-love and truly loving the human that we are. And then from there, it just, you can just continue to expand, 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 expand. Amazing. So if there are any questions when you're tuning in, please write them down. Even if you're watching this as a recording, we'd love to hear your feedback, questions, concerns, thoughts, so that we can address them on our next calls. So Ashley, we've talked about self-love, we've talked about freedom, we've talked about self-awareness. And um, do you think, so one of the things that we talked about with Peter today at the Founders Thoughts that I found like was revelated, like a revelation for me. There was like this matrix that he presented where he showed how self-awareness not only impacts ourself, right? And it then impacts, um, if I look at what the, the drawing that I'm, I'm sure I'm saying the right thing, was self-awareness impacts self-management, right? The regulation of what and making choices because we are aware of whatever's going on mm -hmm. and then it mm -hmm. also impacts our social awareness where we are mm -hmm. socially being you know impacted impacting we're interacting with others therefore both that self-management and social awareness connects the relationships so really self-awareness self-love ultimately is the most selfless thing we could also do because it because a lot of times i hear like, like that's selfish or i'm you're, she's only focusing on herself or whatever it is, but ultimately self-love feeds the quality of our relationship. Would you say that's accurate? I would absolutely say that that is accurate. Absolutely. And I think that's a beautiful description of it. It's like, if we can have self-awareness and we can have self-love, we have access to so many new choices. We get to choose how we show up in the world. We get to choose how we interact with people. We get to choose you know, if someone says something that triggers us or rejects us, we get to choose the lens through which we receive that. It could be that person's just having a bad day and we are just on the back end of it. But to me, I just, I think it's beautiful. To me, I think it's access to our power, actually, to our power to create our own lives. And so when someone does something that we don't like or they reject us, when we have both of those things that you mentioned, self-awareness and self-love, rejection becomes less about how worthy we are and how much we want other people's approval. And it becomes more about understanding 
that every human has a different lens through which that they view the world. Every human has different tastes. Every human has their own blockages to love and their own stuff that they're working through and their own self-awareness journey to go on. So from my perspective, the more that you love yourself, the more clarity you have about that. And ultimately, the more compassion you're going to have for yourself and your fellow human. 100% agree. And so I noticed we have about five minutes left, Ashley. So what would you like to um, focus on just like the conclusion or you can look at what would you say are the, like the top five things you would look at for self love self awareness, like where would you start if you're not used to doing this? Yeah, so I would say maybe two or three things come to my mind right away. And so one of, one of them I mentioned myself, one of them I mentioned at the beginning, which is when you wake up in the morning, let's see what are your first thoughts that you have and start to notice, bring your awareness as we were talking about as a topic, bring your awareness to that and then take your intentionality to shower yourself in love and do it twice a day in the morning and in the evening, and the reason I say the morning and the evening is twofold. One, it sets your day up, but two, when you wake up in the morning, your brain is still in like the alpha theta waves. It's not quite go, go, go yet. So your subconscious mind is gonna take that in a lot easier. And so you're gonna be able to program yourself a lot more. And it's the same reason why you wanna do it at night as you're getting ready to go to bed. It's like, you can lay down in bed and start to be like, I love my hair. I love my kindness. I love that I'm compassionate. I love you know the way that I help this person today. I love, you know, and just start to, to do that and love on yourself, even if you have to fake it. So that's number one, practice showering yourself in love twice a day, even if you have to fake it for a while. It's like that, fake it till you make it. And the way that you can shower yourself in love, it can be physical, it can be hugging yourself, it could be self massage and just showing your body love this way, right? It could just be like lightly touching and stroking, just feeling that you have a body. Then there's also the emotional, like I was saying before, and talking about all, all the things that you do love about yourself. And that also includes the mental speaks, the way you're speaking to yourself. You know, some people will say the affirmations, like um, I, I am love or I'm enough. I actually have started inserting the words, I am already enough. I am already worthy. I am already deserving of love because then that negates that we have to do something or be something to receive that. So I would use those words again as a hack. Um, and then the spiritual, there's also the spiritual side of just feeling it, whether you're connected to God or you pray or you have some sort of spiritual practice, um, I, would, I would use that as well. Um, so that's the first one. Then the second one is just kind of where your focus is. So instead of trying to focus on changing yourself constantly, Focus on allowing yourself to just be you. Just really just be in the allowance of who you are, be in the allowance of your journey, be in the allowance of your self-awareness practice. And that's going to give you power as well. Power in, again, creating your life. And then I would say the third one is actually do some work and do some writing. And I use this tool that's super powerful, which is called the dyad. And you just say, tell me and you create a question. And so for this, I would say, tell me what I love about myself. Tell me what you, or so if I was saying it to you, I would say, Jessica, tell me what you love about yourself. So tell me what you love about yourself, Jessica, one thing. I love that I am loving. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me what you love about yourself, Jessica. Uh, that I am friendly. Beautiful. Thank you. Tell me what you love about yourself, Jessica. Mm, I love that. I smile a lot. <laughs> and you have such a beautiful smile. So this practice, you can, eat, you can do it with yourself and set a timer and do it for 10 minutes and just name one thing. Tell me what you love about yourself. Name one thing. Write it down. Read it again. Tell me what you love about yourself. Write one down and do it for 10 minutes. And I promise you'll get deep and you'll really start to see things about yourself. And you can use that same practice for also uh, around awareness. Like, tell me, some, tell me a thought that you're aware of right now. And then you can go through it that way too. So those are my three hacks for today. <laughs> Amazing. I love those hacks and they're super useful. And the 
I'm definitely going to do that exercise more. Just doing the three already makes me feel great, right? So it, it's very. So thank you. And imagine so much if you did it with a friend, right? Like imagine I asked you that for ten minutes straight, and then you asked your friend, your family member, your partner that same thing for ten minutes straight. It's really, really powerful, and the connection that it will create with yourself and with whoever you do it with can be pretty incredible too. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ashley. This was so insightful. So amazing. Thanks for your patience. For We had a little bit of technical issues, but it all got resolved. I mean, I did, not we. So thank <laughs> you so much. Take care. Have an amazing rest of your day. And you we will be changing a little bit to our Hack Mankind 2.0. And I think that will be before our next call, but we will know. So in order for you to know exactly, www.hackmankind.com. So you're sure to have the schedule and have access for free to um, Ashley's next The Art of Power. And I promise we will have better connection. I'll, I'll have a better connection. <laughs> thank, you so well, thank you. Thank you and good luck with your move. And thanks everybody for watching and let us know how it goes for you. Yes, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Take care everybody. Bye.